Can we talk about Kenny Omega? And first, I want to ask a question to Dave just about the trend of his percentage and then just ask Mike what he thought. But so first, so Omega has the tremendous 2018. Last year's a little bit of a transition. This year, you know, for better or worse, you know, I think people probably a little little disappointed, but there is a story in, in him getting back to but being. Still, but, 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 but it was, it was, you know, he may win tag team of the year anyway, may, may, may win match of the year this year. So um, he goes from 49% to 53%. Did you see any trends or did, did you see, well, like, how did he get to 61 this year after, you know, two years ago having that tremendous year and, and not being at that level yet? Okay, so number one, I think that the exposure in the United States helped. The other one that I think is is that as each year goes by and another year is in the books, you know, you really had that Omega, Naito, Ibushi, and Ishii ballot. A lot of people voted on that one because, um, hey, look, New Japan's been a phenomenal product. And... You know, if you look at like a couple of years ago, those guys weren't getting this level of vote. So they all, I think that that brought all of them up. And then Omega, if you weren't going to vote for all of them, the, like like you had you had two, two types of ballots. You had the, the ballot with the Akiyama, Tawe, maybe a Fujiwara, Hayabusa, maybe. Um, um, and then you had the, the New Japan modern ballot. And Akiyama... And Omega got a little bit from the enough from the other side, so to speak, that they both made it by the skin of their teeth. So that's why it happened. I, I, you know, I, I, it's funny. I thought that Omega would go down this year just because he wasn't featured in that Hall of Fame level this year. But then when you like, if you research, like when I wrote that bio of Kenny Omega, you know, it was like, kind of like, and you look at like all those match of the years. I mean, it's like the idea that this guy. I mean. Do you realize how unheard of it is for two years in a row, a match in Japan to be match of the year in the, you know, by every American, you know, thing like pro wrestling illustrated for a Japanese match to match as match of the year. I mean, it deserved it, but it's like, it's, uh, you know, there were matches, you know, there, but, but there have been Japanese matches that deserved a match of the year that didn't even get in the observer poll because somebody had a good match at WrestleMania. But, but you, you know, enough of them have to where, you know, you could, and you, let's face it, we knew going in, you know, I, I think that I knew the day that Omega and Okada did that first Tokyo Dome match, this is going to be match of the year, which is funny because I actually think that the, uh, the second one that year was better, but, and then when they did the Osaka match, you know, the next year, the, the, the 69 minutes, like, this is match of the year, if not match of the decade, if not match of whatever. So it's kind of like, you know, I, you know, you know, it's the day of the show, but for, for it to get, an, um, you know, that, that standard in the United States was unheard of. Um, and, you know, I look at everything, you know, that, you know, the, the, the underrated part was that he was doing these matches under the radar in DDT and all Japan. And, and even in new Japan before new Japan got, um, you know, New Japan World started and the New Japan pay-per-view started, you know, going back where we had to trade tapes to get the New Japan stuff. I mean, I, I remember, you know, watching, I, I don't remember who it was against. It might have been, um, but it was, it was um, Kenny Omega was in, it was when he was in All Japan and he was the junior heavyweight champion. And I remember watching this match and it's like, it was almost like when I first saw Randy Savage. And it was just like, wait a minute, wait a minute. How is this guy this good? When, when I've never heard of him, you know, not that I, I'd heard of him, don't get me wrong, but how is this guy this good? Cause I didn't, I didn't follow PWG and I didn't follow DDT. You know, I mean, I'd known about the, you know, the Omega Ibushi, and this was actually before Omega and Ibushi though. Um, the, the 2012 match at Budokan, this would have been even before that. Um, and it was just kind of like, wait a minute, this guy's like unbelievably good. And, you know, but it wasn't, you know, I don't think that the world really saw it until AJ left. It's funny. If AJ stayed, I wonder, I, I think he still gets in that spot and feuds with AJ. I think that it's just too much talent not to do it, but, um, but that may have given him a year boost, you know, of, of that. But I mean, when I did the bios, I will say this, like the only one, when I was done with those bios that I questioned was Akiyama. I was like, oh, you know, he's, he's there. It's not a bad pick, but like Omega Lagarde and Medico were just like, these guys are so Hall of Famers. Thoughts on Omega, Mike? I think when it, 
Yeah, when it comes to Omega, I think my thoughts, in terms of his path to the Hall of Fame, I think my thoughts are probably a little different than Dave's. He was the only one of the four inductees that I did not vote for. And as David mentioned it a minute or two ago, I even thought that there was a chance that the voting percentage would drop. There was a pretty good chance from the 53% that he had in 2019, just because of the role that he had in AEW, uh, where he's taken the long route to the single spotlight. Um, For me personally, I think I was waiting to see how Omega did in 2021, because we all knew this was coming. Let's see how he does in 2021 with AEW to finalize if I give him the vote. I think the induction that uh, he had in spite of never having worked for WWF, WWE, or WCW, man, I I think that says an awful lot. I'm going to say that in terms of his path to the Hall of Fame, I think Dave's coverage of New Japan and AEW played a huge role in his selection. And I think at the same time, and Dave would be the only one that could confirm or deny this, I think the other thing that really played a huge role in Omega getting in this year was younger voters. Um, Davis talked about how the the overall voting age of, of the people that are voting has has skewed quite a bit younger in recent years. Some of the guys that were um, voting in the past have passed away, and they've it's, been it's replaced. Not, it's not. It's not younger. It's new generation. I don't think that the, the age of the voters has changed as much as the old. You know. I mean, look. You know. Okay. You know the names. But 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 there were guys in their seventies and eighties that 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 died, um, don't vote anymore, and they're replenished by younger voters. I don't know if the age is different, but it's the, but the generation is is absolutely different. You know. So, I mean. Okay. I notice. I notice it huge. Yeah. So it's new generation voters that are not going to be afraid to vote for Omega. Now, all things being equal, if we went the same career path that Omega had, so I know it's, it's weird to think this way, but that same career path up to today, but then go five years, maybe seven years ago, as far as the voting, the people that were voting, I don't know that Omega would have made the 60% if that's replaced by those other people. So I think that it was the new generation voters who, who were really the impetus to get him to the 60. I don't know because of Kurt, I, I would disagree. And because of Shawn Michaels to a degree, because I see if you were, you know, you remember, well, you know, I mean, even though it took Shawn several years and it took Omega several years too, it was like with Shawn, okay, granted it's WWF, but really, it's about his match quality and not about, you know, it's, it's, it's not about anything else. And I think that it's the same thing. Um, you know, when you, when you do that, um, I mean, it, it would have been, it would have been different, but, but if you look at the equivalent guys in the nineties, okay. So Misawa was, was Misawa and Kawada I put in before we had voting and they were, you know, you know, younger than Kenny probably when they went in or about the same, you know, the younger. And then the first one after would have been Kobashi, which was 35 years old, bing, like what was it? 95% of the vote. And that's another one where it's like he was in the middle of his career. I think that there was, um, but those guys were like, so, you know, the, I don't, you know, they, you know, like, again, I think that w- the one thing that, that hurt him is that, I think that what what you said about me helped him and also hurt him at the same time. And I think it, I don't know that it balances out, but because there was so much of the, the thing of, and, and it didn't keep him out, but just the idea that, um, you know, he, he, you know, he wasn't in WWF. Um, and, and not even just that, just that he's not that good. He's not that good from people who, whatever reason politically don't want to say that he's that good. And I thought that that was enough to keep 40% of the people voting for him. And then almost did. It was only 61%. Not saying, you know, but I mean, as far as like, if you look at him, um, 
I, I don't know. It's, it's really hard for me to say Kenny Omega at 37, Kobashi 35. I, I mean, I know when Kobashi was on that ballot that every single person was voting for him. Um, with Omega, it was, I certainly didn't sense that, you know, and, and, um, you know, if you looked at, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, when I saw that, that, that thing of all the guys, you know, there was 104 guys in the last 40 years from that wrestled in the last 40 years that are in the hall of fame. And if you look at like, you know, the awards and things like that, you know, Omega was 14th out of that. So that's, that's a pretty strong thing. And, 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 you know, and, and everyone ahead of him, except for Okada, is in like Flynn, you know what I mean? Those guys are all no brainers and Okada's going in next year. You know, I mean, unless there's, you know, just something where everybody gets amnesia or something, I don't know how he doesn't go in, but, but so, you know, I don't know that it, 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 well, it, it was weird though, but I, I didn't put this way. When this year, when I started the voting, I did not expect Kenny Omega to be in. I thought Akiyama was borderline. Um, I mean, I look, I didn't expect anyone, honestly, I mean, there wasn't one. I mean, when this when the, when I when I saw the ballots, it's like I don't know that this might be the year no one goes in. I did think that. I think with Omega, one of the things to look at was in your breakdown of the different groups that voted, and among retired wrestlers and office, I don't think he's in the top thirty. I yeah. correct me if correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I my recollection in reading through that was the one that jumped out at me that there was no really a voting pattern for Omega among that group at all. Um, no, no, he was, number one with, he was, he was number one with reporters and he was uh, number eight, but he was number eight with historians, which was interesting. And seven with so, active wrestlers. Yeah. I knew he would do fairly well with well, active that would wrestlers make and reporters. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I guess when I looked at all those numbers, that was how I, came to that conclusion about the new generation of voters who oh, you're right. may, I, I, I think, I think maybe the difference is the other people, the older guys will be willing like myself, who's a little bit more of a traditionalist when it comes to the vote, they probably were waiting for another year or two also, where I don't think that the new generation voters necessarily have that same mindset. And well, well I mean, the, I will, I will tell you, and I got this on more than one, ballot of someone who goes, I think Kenny Omega should go in. I think he's a Hall of Famer, but I want to wait one more year, and wouldn't it be great for Omega and Okada to go in as one, two next year? You know, and if you're looking at it in that weird, poetic way, I mean, it's like, I would never think of that when voting, but, but you know, many people did. I mean, I know that. And, and, yeah. and it is a weird, like, if, if you think about it that way, there is a weird, poetic thing of Omega and Okada go in together because they're so associated with each other. True. It, it was it was definitely not a thought that I had. Mine was more of the waiting to see how he did with AEW, and that was really going to be the thing for me to push it over the top. You know, we discussed on one of the previous shows about Kota Ibushi and WWE. Can you imagine career paths and how they change with Kenny Omega and WWE if he stays with them after the Deep South run that he had, oh, he'd, he'd be nobody. Can you imagine how they would he'd have handled him? How how his oh. his career trajectory uh, would have been? One. Here's one. Here's one. Two years ago, when he gets the different offers from everywhere, and he just goes, you know what? I'm going WWE. I'm going to wrestle AJ Styles. I'll bet he doesn't get in this year. Um, all that New Japan stuff because because I think that you know I have great confidence in WWE after Ricochet that, that they don't know how to they don't know how to get anyone over as a baby face. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.